Hey, welcome to Tony's Cool Tools. If it's your first time, thanks for stopping. I really appreciate it. quick announcement. For the last 18 months, I've put out at least one, if not two, videos per week. Starting in January, I'm going to be doing some traveling, as well as some major projects, and they're going to take me some time. So I'm going to be cutting back on my videos to one every other week, just so you know what's going on and you don't see me every single Sunday morning. One of the most frustrating things when you first buy your chainsaw is how to sharpen a chain. If you don't have someone to show you or a mentor, you're in the dark. When I first started, I had bought two chains with my chainsaw. And when one got dull, I'd take it off, take it to the hardware store, and have them sharpen it. Well, two things. One, it was a royal pain to keep going to the hardware store. Number two, it got to be expensive. And it took me a while before I stopped being afraid about sharpening a chainsaw chain. So in today's video, I'm going to cover a method that I think is pretty awesome for beginners or pros too. It takes the guesswork out of the angles and the height of the bit that you need, and it also makes you more accurate. So I brought you inside so you can get a better look at all the different devices that are available here. And there are quite a few, and I still don't have all of them here. The most basic is the standard file. And though it's the most basic and probably the least expensive, it's the hardest to master. And the file kits do come with this guide and it does help out, but there are still so many angles you have to be aware of. And after the standard file, the two-in-one was developed. And it is a pretty good tool for beginners. And it gets you closer to being accurate and sharp on your sharpening of your chainsaws. But the thing that I see most people using are rotary tools, or what they refer to as Dremel tools. Everything is a Dremel tool, almost like Kleenex as opposed to facial tissue. But these things are awesome, whether they're corded or cordless. This definitely makes it a lot easier to work on something. And they do come with guides here that you could get. Most people I don't see using them and try to freehand them. And it takes a little bit of experience to freehand it and get it accurate and get it sharp. But today we're going to be covering the Granberg file and joint. Now they do make a manual version here, but today we're going to be covering the G1012XT and it's the 12 volt motorized version. Very similar to a Dremel, but with a fixture. And then after this, the next thing you go to is a bench mounted grinder. I've been sharpening chains for several years now, using different accessories and kits to get my chain sharpened. And on video 83, I received a Granberg Alaskan sawmill to review. And they also sent me a ripping chain with it, which I've never used before. And what I found is you need different angles on it. And I didn't know how well I would do with my standard Dremel tool or a hand file. So I'm glad that they sent their 12 volt sharpener. It's going to make life a lot easier. And as you know, I love promoting U.S. companies that manufacture in the U.S. And all of the Granberg products are USA made. Now, without a doubt, the rotary tool or the Dremel tool is probably one of the most popular chainsaw sharpening devices out there, either with the guide or without the guide. And in my former life, I worked for Dremel for about 10 years. And the two most popular accessories that they sold was the chainsaw sharpening device and the lawnmower blade sharpening devices. However, one of the things that I wanted to point out was that Elof Granberg was the first one to invent the file and joint in 1954. And afterwards, he came out with the 12 volt version of the file and joint. So he was actually one of the first ones out with a motorized type of chainsaw sharpening device that set angles to make it easy for sawyers to get their chains sharpened. And the file and joint is a hybrid type of tool. It's the best of both worlds. It's almost like using a file, but on a jig. 
so it takes the guesswork out of getting your angles and height. To get results like that, there's one secret. You have to be consistent in your angles. Now naturally, you can use a stone, but it takes a lot of experience to use one of these to know which angle to put it in and draw back and forth on it. Well, the electric sharpeners are really simple, and all you do is turn them on, angle is already set, pull it through a couple of times, and you're through. And here's what you get. Now before we go through the 12 volt file and joint jig here, I wanted to explain a little bit about the bits that are being used. The standard Dremel bit that you see here has a straight shaft. They're about eighth inch thickness in them and they just fit into a collet. And regardless of whether it's a Dremel or anyone else's, they fit all the same. Now occasionally these pull out and some of the import versions don't have the same or the accurate measurement here and they pull out too. I've had that happen. They also come in not only stone but they come in diamond and some even come in carbide. Now the difference between the Granberg is very similar. It looks like the same eighth inch shaft but it's threaded at the bottom. And it's like a mandrel. You stick it in and screw it on. They come with wrenches that screws on to the 12 volt sharpener here. So it doesn't pull out and it stays in place. And I just wanted to caution about these pink bits. They come in a couple of different manufacturers, but what I found is they don't last long and a lot of times they almost shatter on impact. So I stopped using these pink bits here, even though they're cheaper. Now up until now, I've been using the Oregon bits. They're consistent, they're reasonably cheap, they come in these three packs, and they last pretty long. Now when I say last pretty long, please remember, this is not a one time and it'll last you for the rest of your life. These are a consumable. So they probably last about three times or three chains, depending on how long your chain is. And if you happen to hit a rock or a piece of metal and you have to do a lot of grinding, you might use one stone for one chain. Granberg supplies you with three of the most popular bits out there to cover probably 90% of the chains that you're going to be cutting. Comes in 5 30 seconds, 3 16 and 7 30 seconds. So that should cover most of the chains that you have or that you're using now. So I brought you in closer so you could take a look at how the filing joint is attached to your bar. There's a thumb screw right over here. You just position the jig right over the top of the bar here, tighten up the screw slightly, make sure that this clamp or this bar right here is just slightly above the rivets. That holds it so it doesn't pull up when you're filing. And the last thing you want to make sure is that this chain stop right here is right there so that you can go to your, you can index to the next one right there. And you tighten those by hand right over here. So there are only three adjustments for the file and joint. The first one is your top angle right here to get to the right angle of the tooth. This one happens to be 30 degrees. The second thing is you want to make sure that you can get to the right height so that you're inside the gullet. And that you do by turning the star wheel on the top, which graduates either 10 thousandths up or down, depending on whether you're going clockwise or counterclockwise. Let me show you here. We're going up now or down. And I want to make sure that I'm inside that gullet. But as you can see, I'm not quite touching anything here. And I wanted to show you, this is where our material stop is. And that's right underneath here, this little black little screw. Ooh. All I need to do is advance it 
Oop, I went the wrong way. So I got to go clockwise. And just so it starts touching, we're almost there. About a half a turn, five thousandths more. Now I can hear a little bit of grinding, and that's where we want to be. That sets my tooth length as far as how much material I want to remove. So I'll just do a little bit more. And as you can see, we are right in the gullet right there and on the top. You know you're going to get a good grind once we start. So now that we've made the three adjustments that are necessary, all I need to do is turn it on and start grinding. And the stone has gotten all the way to the gullet here. It's nice and shiny. As well as all the way to the tip here. And I will tell you, that's cat's claw sharp right there. So now we're just doing a maintenance sharpening. I don't need to grind this. I haven't hit any rocks. So all I need to do is take two or three little slight grinds with it. And I'm ready to go to the next tooth. And it's as easy as pulling forward. Miss one. Make sure that the backstop here is on and I'm ready to go. Very nice. Now that we're finished on this side, all I have to do is loosen up this wing nut here, rotate it 180 degrees, get, their, get to the appropriate tooth angle here, tighten it up, bring it back down, and there we go. We're ready to start on this side. There's the finished sharpening. As you can see, it goes all the way up the gullet, the full radius all the way to the tip. The unit comes with two alligator clips and we just hooked it to a standard 12 volt battery. You could use your solar charger or some of the jump packs that are available out there. So now that we've finished sharpening both sides, let's go outside and give it a try on a piece of wood. See how well we sharpened it. All right, we've sharpened the chain with the Granberg file and joint. Let's see how well it cuts. The saw has already been started and warmed up a bit, so let's do some cutting. Cuts like butter. So we got a pretty doggone sharp chain here and you can see how smooth it cuts as well. I'm really satisfied with the results of the file and chain from Granberg for sure. So some key learnings about the Granberg file and joint. First, you don't have to take your chain off your saw to sharpen it. So you can do it in the field very easily to tune it up real quickly. Second, you can duplicate all the angles necessary and get accurate cuts out of it, as you saw here just recently. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video, and if so, please like, share, and subscribe, and give me a thumbs up as well. And remember, pass it forward, make the world a better place. And don't be a tool, watch Tony's Cool Tools. Until I see you next time, have a great day.